And now on set with me this day is Mr. Cleopas Nep. He is a multi-dimensional farmer. I make bold to say that because as far as agriculture is concerned, he is into literally everything. But what we will be looking at today is crop production. As it were, agriculture remains the pathway to wealth. Looking at the Nigerian population, agriculture contributes, though statistics differ, about 36% to the GDP. Women, youth, and all are involved in agriculture in one way or the other, even though at the subsistence level. So Cleopas, thank you so much for joining us this day. Thank I would want to find out from you, yeah. what tinkered your interest in agriculture to where you are today? Uh, incidentally, it's a very interesting story. I grew up in a in an agri agrarian background but then i was never a farmer i worked i served with the nigerian immigration service and while i was still serving i discovered my salary was never enough to take care of my needs and i was always having financial challenges so with time we met with the family and we come up we came up with the family budget and we discovered we would never be able to break through so uh, one of my daughters suggested the only way to make our uh, family budget balance was to remove foodstuff completely. And we agreed as a family to remove foodstuff and it balanced. And we discovered we produced more than 10 times what we needed to consume. How long ago was this? Um, that was, that's about 10 years back. It's more than 10 years. I think it's about, uh, about 14 years ago, yes. You know, as I did mention in my intro, I know you do literally everything. Yes. But when it comes to food production, yes. can you share your thoughts with our viewers? How it all started, where you are now, and what future you see for crop production in Nigeria or in your own locality? Um, the decision as a family then was we decided we wouldn't buy anything we ate in our house. And that, was, that is how you still find me into everything. Um, in, to, in crop production, I started with yams, beans, corn, and cassava. And I, we were so surprised at what we produced. And so we decided to continue and we eventually uh, got a land where we were doing these things. And we, could, uh, we got to a maximum production of about 200 and something bags of corn in a year. And then a hundred and something bags of rice, 80 something bags of soybeans, and then uh, cow, cow peas, the normal beans we eat. Now you have no doubt gained so much in yes. crop production. That's right. I would want to find out from you, the level of unemployment in Nigeria today, Yes. looking at where we are, yes. is it permissible looking at what you know? <laughs> um, I want to give you an example beginning with one of my daughters, who was a little girl at the time we started farming. After we harvested our corn, we took one of the small cups, we removed all the seeds on it, we counted, and we counted almost 400 seeds on one cup. Then we took a big one, and we counted 900 and something seeds from just from that cup. So I asked her, um, how many grains produced this? Said one grain each. So, okay, if, and how many times did we go to the farm? So we went to the farm about f five times or so. Say, so, okay, let us assume we are 52 weeks in a year. And we went, and by going to the farm for one week of the 52, we produced far more than what we needed. Then do we have any reason to be hungry? Say, no. So because of that, I believe it applies to everybody. Just a little effort, you produce more than you can consume. There's so much land in so Nigeria, but of course we have not put as little as 10% mm -hmm. into agriculture. That's right. When we look at government policies and what have you, do you think we truly are serious as far as food sustainability and agribusiness is concerned? Um, I think there are a few challenges there. I think we're not making enough policies that will encourage farmers. You know, 
we have been having this challenge of uh, um, herdsmen and the farmers. You, f you produce your, your crops and then you find out the herdsmen will come and not only consume it, and if you challenge them, they threaten your life. So those are some of the setbacks. And I think unless government takes measures to address that, we still have a challenge. Now talk to me about the middleman and the farmer. Yes. You are into crop production. How does the middleman enhance your business or otherwise? <clears throat> the, well, the middleman, where, where he enhances the business is helping you find market for a produce. That's the only place. But then uh, in doing that, in most cases, there are instances where he even gains more than you. But then the most important thing is that he's able to find a market for you where you don't have one. Are you saying you need somebody to go find a market for you? Why can't you as the farmer get a market for yourself? Uh, not, all, not all farmers have the time to go and find market for themselves. If you go to the open market, for instance, you find some of these people go to retail this thing and it takes a lot of time and it takes your time off. You may not have that time as the farmer. You would rather sell this thing in bulk and then make you money. So, you know, as we move on, talking about challenges that the farmer encounters in Nigeria, you are not a visitor to such. I will want to find out from you how problematic is accessing finance because you know you told us you started small yeah share your thoughts with us for those who probably have no capital because normally you get to hear this all the time capital is the problem capital is the problem how can we surmount this challenge now people uh, problem of finance it's a major problem to most farmers and I understand why the financial institutions have to be very careful. Because a lot of people just look at uh, feasibility studies and they think they can put in so much money into farming and make money immediately. With farming, it is not like that. It requires a lot of patience. Um, but there are farmers who have been into it and have gathered a lot of experience. Unfortunately, when they have need for finance, the, the, the banks are not there to give them any loan. I know there have been a couple of loans uh, like this NISA that was introduced to produce, uh, to, to give loans to farmers. I went through the process and the money was approved, but it was never released. So a lot of farmers have similar challenges. We've sat down with a lot of them and it's the same story all over. Do we have farmer cooperatives in Nigeria? Let's even look at the FCT as it were. Okay. Do you people who are engaged in farming, whatever kind of farming, can you say there's any kind of cooperatives that can enable you to speak with one voice? Um, well, there are farmer cooperatives, but in most cases, these ones are for, you know, there are, uh, even, even among farmers, there are farmers. There are subsistent farmers, okay? <laughs> whose crops are, in most cases, very difficult. It wouldn't even take them through the year. So it is such people you find in the cooperative and you don't reason at the same level with them. So that is one challenge there. And by the time you go, even if when you join, even when you join such a cooperative, and maybe you, you're able to get uh, some fertilizer supplied to that cooperative, you, you may discover that you, you're, you're going to get only one bag of fertilizer when you need maybe 50 bucks. So you, you, to you, it will be like wasting your time. Right. Yes. Now, you know, talking about challenges, yes. how big a challenge is logistics? How big a challenge is the ability to preserve mm -hmm. produce after harvest and what have you? Yes, there are challenges there. Um, for grains, for instance, we don't have many silos. And quite often you discover that after you've produced, if you don't, if you don't preserve these things well, you end up having a lot of post harvest losses. And it, it also becomes a problem because some of the, the way some of the farmers go preserving these things is also dangerous for human consumption. 
So I think we have to look into in that direction to find a better way of making uh, preserving these things that we produce. Now you know, talking about preservation. Yeah. Um, as far as government policies are concerned, I will also want us to go back there because you did mention of silos and what have you. Yes. Um, do you have a buy-in as far as government is concerned and the Nigerian farmer, where probably excess crops can be mopped up and preserved in these silosis? Because I know there are silosis all around the country, mm -hmm. but in most instances, some of them are just moribund, lying down there and of no use. Now, if there are, then there is a communication barrier between the farmers and these things. I think there should be some sensitization to make the farmers know that such facilities are available so they can buy in and store their crops properly. Now, another thing I want to find out from you as a uh, uh, crop production farmer, uh, pricing, the pricing regime mm -hmm. in Nigeria, mm -hmm. who determines pricing as far as food is concerned? Mm -hmm. What are the factors that you say are factored into, you know, production right to the market? For, for the farmer, he looks at the cost of his inputs, he looks at the labor he has put in, and that helps him to be able to fix a price, to fix a price on, on his produce. Unfortunately, when you get to the market, it is not always like that. The, the middleman, in a, lot, a lot of times, they are syndicated, and the farmers are not syndicated. So because of their syndicate, they fix a price, it has to be this much. And you either sell it or, or you leave it. But how does that help you as a farmer at the end of the day? It, doesn't, it does not help the farmer because the farmers don't have an association that brings them together to, to fix their prices now. All right. Yes. Well, thanks for your time. At this point, welcome, I must thank you for taking time out to share your thoughts with us. I must tell you, even I talking to you have been very enriched. Thank you very much. I have been speaking with Mr. Cleopas Nep. He is a multi-dimensional farmer. He does everything farming. We only had an aspect of it. I want to believe sometime down the road, we will come back to him to still tap from his wealth of experience as far as other sectors in the agricultural sector is concerned.